Welcome back, everybody. 9.09 is the time on this rainy Friday morning. Thanks for joining us. Back now with our CHI St. Vincent, Dr. Morgan Sauer, who is telling us more about something that's a very serious issue if it is, if it is something that you can track. We're talking about bacterial meningitis today. Yep. Dr. Sauer, great to see you again, as always, Good buddy. Good to see you. How now, this is something that was in the news last year. A young girl yes. swimming in a, uh, a swimming hole of sorts here in the state mm -hmm. uh, contracted this. It was bacterial meningitis mm -hmm. in her brain. And th that was I mean, made headlines mainly because she survived. One of only, what, one or two people that's ever survived it, which is so rare. Extremely rare. There will be papers about her for the next 20 years on how she survived this and how she was treated so well here in central Arkansas. It's Unbelievable. Amazing. All right, let's talk first about um, just what it is, bacterial mm -hmm. meningitis. What exactly uh, is, it, is it formed of, and how can people contract it? Well, she actually had an amoeba that went oh, into amoeba. her brain. That's right, okay. So she had an amoeba, which is a little bit different than a bacteria for us uh, geeks. I can't remember which turtle, ninja turtle oh, that yeah. would be. <laughs> yes, Donatello. But for some of yeah. us geeks. And so Neisseria is the one though, that we're worried about, especially in first year college students or in army recruits. Whenever you put large concentrations of people together, that's where you're gonna get transmission of this. About 10 to 15 percent of people are gonna have Neisseria meningitis that's in the back of the nose or the back of the throat. Okay. They're colonized, they're fine. It's not where it causes problems, but they can pass it to other people. And when you think about these people who are in like mass concentrations, First year college students, they're worn out, they're tired, their immune systems are down. Or army recruits in barracks, basic training, they're worn down, they're tired. And that's when people can get meningitis from this. Interesting. Okay, so let's talk about some of the symptoms because if someone is, is you know, experiencing any of these, or all of them especially, mm -hmm. they should probably seek medical attention. Indeed. So what happens is after you're exposed to Neisseria meningitis, you typically get symptoms about three to seven days later. And okay. what you're looking for is high fever, intense headache, as photosensitivity or sensitivity to light, you just can't be around light, nausea, and also alteration of mental status. Obviously, if you have a fever and you're not thinking right, it's time to go get some help ASAP because antibiotics are effective for this. Okay, and speaking of how effective this can be, mm -hmm. talk about the, uh, I mean, this is something that can cause death, we've heard before, so yep. th there's a fatality rate with this, but also, fortunately, signs that you can recover. It's not like this is the end of the world for people. So on the recovery part, about 15, 10 to 15% of people can die from this. Another 10 to 15% of people will have some type of permanent damage from it, especially if it goes into the bloodstream. Okay. So you can get loss of limbs, deafness, or even brain damage. Fortunately, 70% of people will be okay. Getting that treatment early is important, but prevention is actually the best way to go about it. Let's talk about prevention. I mean, is it, when you mentioned you know, college kids being worn down in a yep. different environment, uh, soldiers in the barracks, is there any way for them to prevent it at all? Maybe sleeping more, I guess, or, or building up their body's immune system? First of all, treat your body well. Yeah. You know, your body's gotta carry you around for the rest of your life. So <laughs> go ahead and be sure that you're eating well, getting plenty of rest and plenty of exercise. Keep your immune system up. Additionally, there are meningococcal vaccines, and anybody mm. who's going into these types of situations, soldiers, first-year college students, dorm room living, Probably a good idea to go ahead and get the meningococcal vaccine. It's a one one dose and it works great. Are they recommended, or I mean, are they're not required? Probably just recommended. Should this be something they ask their doctor about, or is it something the doctor would recommend to them? Do you think? It's not required, but it is recommended. Okay. And colleges and universities, by law, actually have to provide information on this to let them know that this is recommended. Some places even require a waiver if you're not going to do it. Oh, really? But just go talk to your doctor, find out where you can get the meningococcal vaccine. You'll be fine. Yeah. Parents. Your kid's doctor may not know to ask about this, so go ahead and help your children out by getting them something like this. Especially since a lot of these college kids about to head off to campus for the first time here in just a couple of weeks, so yep. make sure you ask about that and talk to your doctor, of course, if you're experiencing any of the symptoms that we just mentioned. All right, for more, you can always contact the Longevity Center at CHI St. Vincent. I want to thank you so much for coming in today. Thank Dr. Sauer, always a pleasure, my friend. Great to see you, buddy. All right, coming up after this, we're heading to the kitchen. All right.